We are live. Good morning, everybody. It's your favorite truck driver in the whole wide world, ex truck driver. It's Bitcoin Ben. Here for the daily, what the pluck is going on in cryptocurrencies in the rest of the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My friends, I cannot believe the world we're living in. Think back four years ago and imagine we'd have El Salvador. Now we have, uh, oh, what? Oh, he just won as president. Um, what? Where is that? Uh, is that v Venezuela? Venezuela, is that right? Uh, Argentina. Yes. Ar Thank you, Chad. Argentina. This guy is already saying, yep, we are implementing Bitcoin as a payment, as legal tender. Then we have... Um, um, we have an announcement that there are like seven other countries implementing the Bitcoin as legal tender. Um, after January 1, seven other countries. Now, this actually comes from a guy named Kaiser, Miss, Mr. Max Kaiser. He is all over South America. He's on it, right? Now, we also have that all of the banks in, all, all of the banks in the UK are, are jumping on jumping on friggin' Bitcoin. America is going to get passed by. Uh, there's the whole world is transitioning over to Bitcoin and the American public doesn't know jack crap about it. Do you know why? Because they don't want you to know. They have to keep the labor force. They can't let you little guys get rich. Yes, bingo. The unboxing channel, yep. That's where Bitcoin Ben's Crypto Club will help the average person. Hey, we are trying. We are trying. Right? Unfortunately, a lot more than seven cup. Brother, don't even worry about the CBDC. Those are such a fucking joke. They are such a joke. No one of relevance is going to use them. I'm actually calling the CBDCs the welfare dollar. The only people that are going to deal in CBCDs are the welfare people. Corporate welfare, the, uh, the EFT or E, whatever that fucking card is where you get free food, that college tuition, welfare. Those are the only people 
that are going to value the CBDCs. No one else is going to hold that crap. Yes. The CBDCs are the modern day food stamps. That's what they are. All right. Yep. They'll probably send our social security in CBDCs too. Yeah. Anything being paid out by the federal government will be CD CBDCs. Of course. But no one's gonna value them. No no one's gonna go, oh man. I'm glad I got my CBDCs. Thank God. No. And we're in the in the second half hour. I'm going to play you and we're going to talk about an interview from Raul Powell. Right? Raul is a and in the middle of the video he gives a little wink and a smile when he answers a question and that's what I want to talk about Raul Paul right Raul Ra, Raul he's an insider folks He knows all these sons of bitches. And and he makes a comment about a very influential guy and his involvement with Bitcoin. This, I'm telling you folks, This is going to be the biggest run-up we've ever seen. And I don't have all the charts. I don't have all the graphs. Raul does. I'm telling you, folks. this, This is why I'm telling everybody for... Christ's sakes, folks, get into Bitcoin. Everyone outside of America, did you see over in Turkey that the Bitcoin hit an all-time high again? Folks, you have to understand all of these other currencies, or as I like to call them, the shorter, the shorter midgets, the U.S. dollar is the tallest midget. The rest of the currencies are shorter than the dollar. They're smaller midgets, but they're all midgets. We we are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth because you have to understand the old system is trying to to capture the new system. That's what happened with the CEO of OpenAI. If you're not watching that friggin' debacle, you're missing it. That's the, it's exactly what happened in the 2000 
tech bubble. They chose the win. They chose the winners and then they bought them. Then they got rid of the people they didn't like. And then they grew the companies. This is this is the the new system. And we, me, you, we're outside, we're getting outside of their system. Right? In the interview, we're going to watch here in about 20 minutes. You're going to hear the word quad, quadrillion. Do you know what a quadrillion is? It's a thousand trillion. A thousand trillion. And the derivatives market is over one. Yep, Daddy O got it. Right? Sounds like a derivatives market. <laughs> Bingo, Daddy O. The derivatives market is over a quadrillion dollars. Think about that, folks. A, a derivative is fake value. It's rehypothecation of a commodity or a share. It's an illusion. As this market, as this world, think about it, folks. The president of Argentina, right? Arg understand this. Argentina's economy is a hundred times larger than El Salvador. And some of the other countries that are jumping on board after January 1, off the charts, folks. We're talking Brazil. We're talking, mark my words, folks, mark my words. We're talking Venezuela. We're talking Brazil. We're talking most of the Middle East will be adopting the Bitcoin as a legal tender to escape the dollar. This is gonna get nuts, folks. I'm telling you guys now, if you do not have a Calyx crypto only laptop, for Christ's sake, quit holding your cryptos on what looks like a keychain and plugging it into a shit laptop. Word from the sponsor. Hold, please. 
Are you buying and selling cryptos on the same laptop that you're using to browse the internet, read your email, and visit social media sites? If so, you're exposing your cryptos to theft. Whenever you're online, you're at risk of getting hacked and having your identity stolen. How would you feel if someone stole all of your cryptos? What would that do to your finances? Guard your cryptos with a safe and secure laptop from Calix Solutions. Each laptop is set up just for you and your cryptos, and then we walk you through exactly how it works. Don't risk the security of your cryptos. Order a crypto laptop from Calix Solutions now to secure your crypto future. Learn more at calixsolutions.io. And if you buy right now, you get a hundred dollars off the laptop. So call up Patrick, my good buddy. He may not be hunting right now. 702-845-8276. Or just go to the website, calixsolutions.io. Okay, so we have Tito. Love your vodka, by the way, bro. Thank you. Tito says Brazil and Venezuela have corrupt governments. My boy Austin R. replies, Argentina was corrupt too. My friends, we are in a wave of national like we haven't seen since Andrew Jackson. We have mainstream rappers that are elite at these huge concerts, huge concerts with a bunch of young people chanting, we want Trump, we want Trump, we want Trump. When was the last time you heard a group of youngsters yelling, we want Trump? We are at the precipice of this. We are at the beginning of this, folks. This is going to go ballistic. The, I, I have a video today at three on Woo Woo on my woo-woo show. Folks, it's out in the open. They're admitting they have earthquake weapons. The governments are threatening each other with earthquakes. They're admitting they have weather weapons because they can't hide everything. They're too overwhelmed. Did you see what Elon Musk is doing? Elon Musk is going lawsuit happy. Michael Saylor just listen to me, folks. Just launched a campaign with 500 CEOs of major corporations that he's teaching how to put Bitcoin on their balance sheet. He's doing an event for 500 CEOs 
and COOs and CFOs on how to hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Bingo, baby. Bingo. We got Dr. Vagisil. What a frick, dude. If that's your real name, I swear to God, your parents loved the hell out of you. And had one hell of a sense of humor. Argentina president elect is pro-Bitcoin and hates the left. I, we, we are, we are so in trouble, but yet such in a good place. Now, when I say we, Dr. Vagisil says, I'm a fake gynecologist. Brother, don't undercut yourself. You are not fake. There's somebody calling me while I'm doing my show. Hang on a second. You're you're not fake. You're the real thing, brother. We are all gynecologists at heart. I'm just saying. Oh, okay. Now that we've taken the show completely into the gutter, it's it's folks, I'm telling you now. We all right. For those of you on YouTube, I'm gonna give you a little taste. A little bitty taste. Just a little, just a little bit. to come take a step back and see the broad picture which is the way all these technologies are interlinked because this is all about exponentiality and humans can't think in exponential terms how consequential do you want to say machine intelligence is it's almost certainly as consequential as writing how long did writing take to disseminate through the human population you know hundreds thousands of years and we're dealing with it now on a scale of months but in this kind of world, you're compounding 100% growth every year, and the numbers become astronomical. AI is going to spot patterns in the world that were just completely invisible to us. Even if you think that the AI and the robots are your demise, you might as well bloody invest in them and make some money out of it. If not, you're just going to be angry man shaking your fists at the clouds. <laughs> My crypto journey as many of you know, started back in 2012 when I'd gone around the world trying to start the world's safest bank. Having seen Europe blow up its banking system, the government's almost defaulting, hot on the heels of the financial crisis. And I knew that we needed a different answer. In that process, a friend of mine, Emil Woods, who was one of my global macro investor subscribers, that's my kind of high-end research service that I've been writing for the last 19 years, Emil Woods kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, you need to look at Bitcoin. And the moment I saw it, I kind of understood that there was two component parts of this. One was the cryptocurrency itself, which was interesting, but also blockchain technology and how it could solve many of the problems of the world's financial system. 
I wrote the first ever, I think, macro strategy piece on Bitcoin back then and started investing. At Global Macro Investor, every year we have a roundtable. It's magic. It's like a whole bunch of old friends who've been, you know, most of my subscribers have been there for a decade or some, some of them two decades, get together and we talk macro, we talk ideas, we share some wine, we have some laughs and we hatch plans of doing stuff together, businesses, co-investing, all sorts of stuff. I got Emil Woods to present about Bitcoin and periodically he came along and presented at those round tables was Dan Tapiero. And so he's been part of my crypto journey and I'm part of his. And we've learned to do the hard work and to really, really dig in and get the full macro understanding of the space. We're neither of us are technologists, but we have 30 years of macro. We understand how economies work. We understand how markets work. We understand market psychology and we understand opportunity sets and secular trends and direction of travel. And so Dan and I have always been kind of updating each other on this. And I think many people famously remember Dan coming to me on Real Vision back in 2018, I think it was, or 19, 18, saying, hey, listen, you need to look at Bitcoin again. And I... Raul, good to be back. It's been a while. That's right. We're, we're both in the Caribbean, different parts of the Caribbean. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful here in Dorado Beach. Very happy to be here. Uh, especially during the winter. Exactly right. Exactly right. Now, listen, I think what we'll, what, what we'll do is we'll, we'll first talk macro as ever to kind of level set. Then we'll talk digital assets where we are, and then we'll talk what you're specifically up to, because that's always a nice kind of journey for people to go down. So you and I seem to have been the only people who actually thought this was a stupidly disinflationary environment. And we've both been yelling about it. Talk, talk me through your macro view. Yeah, well, you know, I have to say, um, I was right about the trajectory of inflation this year, but wrong on uh, interest rates. Same. <laughs> you know, look, I think this year, uh, you and I have both been right on inflation, but frankly, wrong on interest rates. Um, I think the Fed has made a, a terrible mistake by not following their own uh, dictate uh, that policy works with a lag, and usually an 18-month lag. So in my 30-year career, and I'm sure in yours, uh, we've never experienced a Fed that was responding month to month uh, you know, as a result of uh, CPI readings or employment readings. It's always been, always, policy works with a lag, about 18 months, 24 months, and so I think they turned extremely aggressive tightening at the absolute peak of the CPI. It was right at the 7% uh, print or whenever that was. And CPIs come down just about every month. And so, um, you know, while we were right about uh, inflation, uh, they kept tightening. And just recently, of course, the 10 year broke out to the upside. So I think our view that broadly this tightening will be dis disinflationary. Uh, was right even up to, I would say, you know, three and a half, four percent. Now there's a risk that it could actually slip into deflation. To my view on this, because I've been observing exactly the same thing, this macro breakage between what the Fed normally do and what rates normally do. And my view is the Fed aren't stupid, so they did it on purpose. And, you know, I talk about this debt refi cycle, and the only way of doing that is to have deflation so then they can get rates lower and they can use the balance sheet i kind of feel like it was purposefully orchestrated i, I don't do know Rob, well that seems you know too fancy i mean honestly i i i you know it doesn't really i mean look that's possible but i think it's a bit too fancy uh in a sense i'm i'm not sure that they think that they have uh that much control um you know, the way they acted, at, at least in, in my view, it feels to me like they've been acting from a position of weakness, uh, not strength. They've been very reactive. This hasn't been planned. Um, so look, as far as I can remember, this is, I mean, I say the worst Fed 
that uh, we we lived through. But I really think um, they didn't tighten soon enough. Then they panicked and tightened, over tightened, decided to over tighten at the peak, and now they're staying tight. Um, now, look, that doesn't preclude them from potentially shifting. All right, everyone watching on YouTube, you go bye bye because YouTube sucks. If you want to continue watching the show and catch the Woo Woo show at three o'clock today live, I will be talking about weather weapons, earthquake weapons. And where we're headed, and how this all links up with Bitcoin, baby. So, YouTube, you go bye bye. Everyone watching on YouTube, there's a link in the description area on YouTube for my private server. Join right now, you get. 20% off. It's only $8. There you go. Love you guys. Bye-bye, YouTube.